All right. So let's have a look at these. Question number one. Question number one. What kind of question is question number one? It's a work energy theorem question. Okay. The second question is the law of conservation of energy question. Okay. The reason I make the last quiz in the unit like that okay, is because on the unit exam, you're going to have to be able to tell the difference between the two types of questions. They give you similar information. Okay. But there are some things that you will always get in a work energy theorem question that you will never get in a law of conservation of energy question. Okay. Something you will never get in a law of conservation of energy question okay, is that. The word work will never be in a law of conservation of energy question. Because if work is done, energy is not conserved. Energy changes. Okay? EI won't equal EF if work is done. Okay? So if you ever see the word work, it is not a law of conservation of energy question. Okay? Another thing you will never get in a law of conservation of energy question is force. You'll never get force in a law of conservation of energy question because it's never part of it. Okay? Everybody follow me there? So those are two things you always want to be the lookout for. See the word work, you know it's a work energy theorem question. Okay? If you see force, it's a work energy theorem question. Okay? All right. First mark for number one is for their givens. We're told the initial height, the final height, and the mass of the object. Okay, so it's a load of construction materials that's being moved 25 meters. Okay. Next mark, recognizing that it was a work as a change in energy, work energy theorem question. So that's their second mark. Okay. In order to calculate the change in energy, we don't have to do anything with force and distance in this one because it just asks us to calculate the work. So all we have to do is take the final potential energy, subtract the initial potential energy, and that'll give us our work. So a mark for identifying it was potential energy. Okay. And then another mark for punching in the numbers. So 200 times 9.81 times 35 minus 200 times 9.81 times 10. They may have also only put in 200 times 9.81 times 25. That will also work. Okay? It only works on potential energy questions, but it could work if they did that. Okay? And that would be worth a mark as well, okay? which is why it's circled right here. Okay? All right. And then a mark for our final answer. The amount of work done is 49,000, except that that does not have two significant figures, so it should be 4.9 times 10 to the 4 joules, not this number. Okay. Questions on that one other than, oh, I forgot significant figures, because I heard that like a whole bunch of times there. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know that like this, I can't be certain of anything beyond this digit. That's why we have significant figures, right? My least accurate numbers only had two, right? So I'm not, that, that might well be there, but I can't be certain of it. So I can't write it. All right. Question number, what's that? Yeah, Mark for Givens, yeah. All right. Number two is a law of conservation of energy question. Anytime something's just going downhill, okay, it's probably a law of conservation of energy question, a roller coaster, a bobsled, kid on a toboggan, whatever. Okay? So they're making a run. When he is 45 meters above the end of the track, so right here, okay, they're moving at 12 meters per second. Further down the track, they are 13 meters above the bottom and moving at an unknown speed that we want to calculate. So if they have something like that, or they have the givens written down as, you know, HI, HF, whatever, give them a mark for that. That's their givens. Okay. They will receive one mark for identifying it as a law of conservation of energy question. Okay. Whichever way they wrote it there. EI equals EF or EPI plus EKI equals EKF plus EPF. Okay. Next mark for recognizing they needed to subtract the potential energy final over to this side. They may not have shown it here. They may have shown it a bit later, but as long as at some point they've got MGHF over on this side, give them a mark for that. Okay, so that's, these are, it's kind of two marks, but it's almost for the same thing. Okay, 
ones for having the, the potential energy move over and ones for expanding it to the full formulas kind of a thing. Okay. They may have just done that all in one step on theirs. All right, we want to calculate VF. Okay, so we're going to take our, uh, we're going to manipulate for VF by first off canceling the masses. It's in every term, and I don't think I gave it to you in the question. Nope, so, okay, we can take that off. We're going to um, then divide by one half and square root to get VF. All right, so if they have this, okay, the manipulation correct, give them a mark for that as well as a mark for plugging in the numbers correctly. So 9.81 times 45 is kind of our initial potential. Here's our initial kinetic, 1 half times 12 squared, minus our final potential, 9.81 times 13, over 1 half square rooted. Okay, and our final answer does not have three significant figures. It has two, okay, so it should be 28 meters per second. Okay, that one's out of six. Now, before you, well, you can put a mark out of 11 on the top of that so that I can read it quickly, okay? Here's the thing, guys. These were both questions from a unit exam from three years ago. So you can expect to see questions very similar to this on your unit exam, which is coming up on Monday. Monday. 30th is Monday. Okay, which is why we're doing our review today, okay? And we'll do efficiency tomorrow. All right, so mark out of 11, let them see it, and then please put them in a nice neat file right here. All right, so we're gonna do our unit exam review here, give you some tips and pointers for the kinds of things you're gonna wanna be looking at over the next few days in preparation, okay? First thing we went over in this unit, types and forms of energy. Okay, so we talked about, you know, nuclear energy, electrical energy, chemical energy, okay, all of that kind of stuff, kind of that first day. We talked about Volta, and we talked about Faraday, and Orsted, and Seebeck, and all of those guys, okay. It was it's kind of, it was photocopied out of the textbook that day, and okay? that's what's in your notes is the photocopy of that. Um, so that stuff is all going to be in the multiple choice. Okay, so you probably would want to know, be able to identify types of energy. So if I said, uh, you know, um, an electric uh, generation plant is, you know, burning coal to produce electricity, what form of energy is it using, All right? And then you would say, you know, A, chemical, B, kinetic, uh, C, nuclear, D, mechanical, okay? Well, it's chemical energy because it's burning coal, right? So kind of a question like that. Those are the kind of things you're going to need. And there's going to be one or two about names of people as well, okay? So make sure you just go over that well enough that you could recognize the correct answer, okay? It's not something you necessarily need to spend a whole bunch of time on. Other things, open, closed, and isolated systems we talked about that day, okay? An open system is one that exchanges matter and energy with its surroundings. The example we talked about that day was a lawnmower, okay? It takes in matter, so it takes in oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide, and the energy that it produces in the form of mechanical energy and heat is also exchanged with the environment. Okay, in a closed system, you exchange energy but not matter. So it's something that's sealed up airtight, so there's no exchange of material, okay? So it'd be like putting a steak in a Ziploc bag and throwing it in the freezer, okay? It's not going to exchange any air, liquid, or solids because it's sealed up, but it's not insulated, so energy will leave, leave the steak and go into the fridge, okay? And an isolated system exchanges neither, right? It's perfectly insulated so that no energy can escape or get in and no matter can escape or get in. Ringing a bell? All right, so like I said, that's gonna be multiple choice kind of stuff. Okay, we also talked that day about thermodynamics, the laws of thermodynamics. Okay, the first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy. Okay, energy can't be created, can't be destroyed. And the second law of thermodynamics says that energy flows from high energy to low energy, most commonly hot to cold. Okay, now we talked about, uh, in that context, we talked about heat engines, okay? We had the, a couple of pictures there. We had the picture of that boat that had the really long pipe and the really short pipe, 
okay? And it was supposed to be taking warm water from the top of the ocean through the heat engine where it would go down to the cold water at the bottom of the ocean and it would turn the motor. And we said, it's impractical, it's not really going to work, but the design is kind of there, okay? But we said the more practical example would be like a jet engine. Okay, a jet engine is a heat engine, okay? We talked about heat pumps, your refrigerator or an air conditioner, okay? And how they use energy, kind of like active transport, to pump heat from a cold area into a hotter area, okay? You can go against the second law of thermodynamics, but it costs you, okay? You have to pay, right? Everybody follow? Okay. In the form of energy, you have to pay. And then we also talked about perpetual motion machines, okay? Perpetual motion machine is a machine that can run forever with no input of energy, okay? And we talked about how the second law of thermodynamics forbids the production of a perpetual motion machine, okay? Because a perpetual motion machine, if it's moving, is going to do what? It's going to lose energy, okay? Because nothing is perfectly isolated. You would have to have a perfectly isolated system for a perpetual motion machine to work, okay? There's always going to be some friction. There's going to be energy lost as sound or heat or light or whatever, and the machine will stop, okay? The other thing we said was that a perpetual motion machine, even if you could build one, would be completely useless because it could never do any what? Work. It could never do any work, because work's a transfer of energy, and if I don't put energy into it, it can't give energy away or it'll stop. Okay, everybody follow there. All right. There will be a question where you will be asked to talk about that and explain how thermodynamics relates to the production of a perpetual motion machine. So make sure you go over that part of your notes. And maybe watch that podcast or something, okay? All right, number, second thing we went over, okay? Scalar versus vector quantities, okay? Is this something we need to know? Yes. Absolutely. And not because I'm going to have a multiple choice question, although I might, that says which of the following is not a vector quantity? Energy, um, velocity, acceleration, displacement, okay? I, I mean, I could have a question like that, okay? But what's more important is, you need to know which ones of these you might need to put a direction on in the problem solving part, in the written. Okay, if I have a question you know, that says a car goes this far in this amount of time, what is its overall velocity, and you don't put a vector on that, you'll get it wrong. Okay? Because you didn't tell me a velocity, you told me a speed. Okay, didn't get a vector on it, so it's not the right answer. Everybody follow? Okay, so we need to remember that scalar quantities are speed, distance, time, energy, and work. Okay. Our vector quantities are velocity, displacement, acceleration, and force. Not that force is going to be a big one for you, okay? But certainly velocity, displacement, and acceleration are. And guys, honestly, on this unit exam, people get nickel and dimed to death on this, okay? They do a five-mark question completely right. They have everything, all the calculations, everything right, and then they forget to put a vector, like a plus sign, on an acceleration. Okay, and then they lose a mark because they didn't put a vector on a vector quantity. Okay. So what you might want to do when you first get the test is quickly look through it, okay, especially the written response part. And I, what I would do is beside every question, I would write two things. How many significant digits do you think the answer needs? And whether the answer needs a vector or not. Okay, it takes you 30 seconds to go through the test to figure that out, but it's time well spent. Okay, do it right away at the beginning, and then when you come back to it later, you know, you're, and you're a little bit frazzled, and that's, that's when you can forget things. You'll look at your little note to yourself and go, right, okay, two significant figures, and that's not a vector quantity. Okay, things like that. Just little kind of test-taking tips there. All right. And then that same day, we talked about V equals D over T and V equals D over T. Okay, remember that these are slightly different, okay? This V is speed, okay? This V, or this D here is distance, T is time. This V is velocity, this D is displacement, this T is time. And remember that also this formula can be written like this. Final position minus initial position over time, okay? And oftentimes I'll ask you to calculate velocity and give you the final position and initial position instead of outright saying, here's the displacement. So it's probably something you'll use on the test at some point. Okay. It could also be part of a graphing question. Okay. I could give you like a position versus time graph where I would ask you to do something like this as well.
Okay, questions so far? All right, don't be afraid to ask as we go. Graphing. Huge. You got one thing on there that probably has the most marks, it would be graphing, followed closely by work energy theorem. Okay, those are the two biggest things on this test. So what two kinds of graphs did we go over? Position versus time and velocity versus time. Make sure you go over those in your notes. Look at your worksheets to do with those because you've got several of them. Okay, uh, listen to the podcast. What you, get, what you have to be able to do on this test is I give you a graph. You are going to have to maybe interpret it. That is, tell me what's going on on the graph. Okay, that might be more multiple choice kind of territory. Okay, uh, and then do some calculations. So I give you a velocity versus time graph and I ask you to calculate displacement or I ask you to calculate acceleration. You've got to remember how you do that. Okay, um, so I'll tell you right now, there's several graphs in the multiple choice. They're mostly interpretation. There's one position versus time graph and one velocity versus time graph in the written response. Okay. And I'll tell you outright, you're going to be asked to do everything I ever asked you to do with either of those graphs on the test. Okay, displacement from velocity versus time, acceleration from velocity versus time, okay, um, displacement and velocity from a position versus time. Okay, you'll be asked to do all of that stuff on there. Okay, so make sure that you remember how to do it. Okay, you are not going to have to build the graphs. The graphs will be there. Okay, they're Google Sheets graphs, so they'll have the equation beside them. Okay, the y equals mx plus b equation. Are you going to have to manipulate and use that? Yes. Okay, that's going to be a big part of that test as well, so make sure you go over how that works. Okay, y is any y value. Okay, so it could be like this y value here. Okay, m is the slope of the line, x is, in, is the corresponding x value to this y, okay, and what's b? Is the y-intercept, okay, down here. I might ask you things like, on this graph, what does the slope represent? Okay, I'm not asking necessarily to calculate it, but in a multiple choice question, here's a velocity versus time graph, what does the slope represent? Acceleration, okay, things like that. That's what we need to, okay. And that's not something you necessarily need to memorize. You could just look at the graph and go, okay, I've got meters per second and I've got seconds here. So if I'm calculating the slope, that's going to be the change in velocity, this minus this over time. Well, change in velocity over time is acceleration. Okay, that's what it is then, okay. You don't necessarily need to memorize it. You can work it out, okay, on your own. Okay. Um, yeah, so graphing is going to be big. Like I said, there's going to be one of each kind. Okay. Go over your graphing lab and your need for speed lab as well, right? Because the stuff that's on there is the stuff I'm going to ask you to do here. Okay, um, with y equals mx plus b, will you have to manipulate that? I can't remember if I asked you that already. Okay, so you will have to manipulate that. I might ask you, like on a velocity versus time graph, um, how long would it take this car to reach 30 meters per second? Okay, so on a velocity versus time graph, if I'm asking you how long something's going to take, what part of that equation are you solving for? X, because time is on the x-axis. I gave you 30 meters per second, so I gave you y. Okay. All right, and then acceleration. Okay, we did right after we talked about graphs, okay, because it was a kind of a natural transition from the slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration to, okay, how do we do this? All right, so the only formula we have that involves acceleration is that the change in velocity over time, Vf minus Vi over T, equals acceleration. There will be some problem solving to do with that formula. Okay, I think I have one really easy one in the multiple choice. And I have two, I think, in the written. Okay. Are you going to have to manipulate that? Yep. Okay. So make sure you look over your algebra okay, and uh, so you know what you're doing in terms of manipulating that equation. Okay. All right. Work energy theorem. There's going to be some multiple choice stuff about work energy theorem as well, mostly like checking your understanding, you know, situational kind of stuff. But obviously the big area is in the written 
two problems, each worth six marks. If there's two problems on work energy theorem, is it a good bet that one is about potential and one is about kinetic? Okay. Spoiler alert, that's what it is. All right, so we got to remember force times distance equals the change in energy. That could be potential energy m times g times h final minus m times g times h initial or one half mvf squared minus one half mvi squared. So initial or final kinetic minus final, eh, final kinetic minus initial kinetic. Okay, and then after that, we got conservation of energy. So EI equals EF. Okay, we've been doing those okay, for quite a while now. Uh, so expect, you know, something going down a hill. Okay, it's a roller coaster, it's a sled, it's a kid in a soapbox derby racer. Okay, just saw the signs for that out on the road the other day. Okay. Okay, so remember that that means our initial mechanical energy. Okay, and that's another thing that we'll have to remember is what is mechanical energy? Mechanical energy is the sum of our potential and our kinetic. So when we're talking about conservation of energy, we're really talking about the conservation of mechanical energy. So there'll be a couple of multiple choice questions about your understanding of this, kind of goes along with thermodynamics a little bit, and there is one, I think it's worth eight marks a problem in the written response. All right, and the last thing, we haven't gone over it yet, but we're going over it tomorrow, is efficiency. Okay, And you calculate efficiency by taking the work that the machine actually does, dividing it by the amount of work you had to put into the machine, okay, that gives you a percentage okay, as, your, uh, as your final answer for efficiency. Okay? So if I put 100 joules worth of fuel okay, in a weed eater okay, and it does 80 joules worth of effective work, it's running at 80% efficiency. By the way, no weed eater would run at that efficiency, but okay, something like that, right? You'd have 80 over 100 equals 80%. Work out, W out, okay, so the, okay, the amount of work it actually does divided by the amount of work you put in. So it's like, you know, the work it does divided by the energy it consumed in doing that work. Yeah. Well, it's not initial and final, it's, the, the, the final energy is the same, it just isn't doing what I want it to do, right? Some of it is heat and sound and other things, right? Okay. And again, we'll talk about that tomorrow, it's a pretty straightforward thing, it's just percentages. And that'll be pretty much entirely in the multiple choice, but it's also going to be something that you're going to need uh, a little bit for your lab report, okay, that's due on the 2nd of June, okay, because one of the questions is about if that third question is kind of how efficient was the conversion. All right, so that's what's on there. Okay, there's 20 multiple choice questions. And there are seven written response questions. And there's 45 marks in the written. Okay, so the whole test is out of 65. All right, so like I said, okay, in the written response, okay, you've got a graphing question, an acceleration question. A graphing question. Two work energy theorem questions. A conservation of energy question. And an acceleration question. Okay, now, the, uh, the test, I think, at least when I made up the key for it, okay, the key took me about, I think it was about 20 minutes, 21 minutes to make, okay? 
which means the test is like a little closer to uh, it's on the harder side okay I'm not saying it's brutal it's not okay but it is going to take you a little more time than let's say your bio test took you okay a lot of people have done the bio test kind of like that okay um, so it's not the easiest physics test I've ever made up all right um, but it's not the hardest one I've ever made up either okay I think it's it's pretty fair because I can still multiply how long it took me by four and it still fits in a class period okay Usually I figure if I, if, I, if I multiply by four and it fits in, it's pretty fair. I think this one is fair slightly more towards harder. Okay? Um, whereas if it takes me, if I can only multiply it by three and fit it in, that's brutal. Okay? And this isn't there. Okay? It's still a multiply by four, so you're still okay. okay? Um, so make sure you take it seriously, though. Okay? If you prepare for this test and you know how to do the things that I've told you are going to be on there, there's not going to be any surprises. Okay, but if you go home this weekend and play Xbox all weekend and come in on Monday to write your test, you're screwed. Okay, there's no nice way to say that, so I'll just say it the way it is. If you don't prepare for this test, you're screwed. Okay, if you prepare for this test, you'll be rewarded. There's nothing on there that will surprise you. Okay. All right, um, so what I'll do is I'll pass out the uh, review package here. Okay, so the skills listed on there. Okay, our uh, problem solving, so distance, speed, and time, velocity versus time, okay, that kind of stuff. Acceleration, uh, it says force on there, but force is only part of work energy theorem, okay. Uh, kinetic and potential energy, conservation of energy and efficiency. Graphing, like we said, be able to construct graph, or actually, you don't have to construct graphs. I built them already. You have to interpret and calculate and extrapolate, okay. Um, and then on the back side of that is some suggested activities. Okay, so for the first few here, it's kind of look that stuff up in your notes and write a brief description or brief answer. Okay, for those kind of things, those would be multiple choice kind of stuff. And then starting with question number nine, you've got some old uh, exam kind of questions there, problems. Okay, and the answers are there for those. Okay, and if you flip that one over, okay, you've got an example of a... Uh, conservation of energy question with the motorcycle. Okay, you've got a couple of graphs there. Okay, these, act, these graphs, graphing questions were old exam questions, same with the motorcycle. Okay, I think we actually did the motorcycle example in class. I think I've moved that from exam to class even. Okay, um, so just have a look at those. Okay, those are old exam questions to give you an idea, kind of the things I'm going to ask. Okay, same with like 9 through, uh, 9 through 14. Okay, so it gives you a pretty good idea. All right, so I would have a look at those and, uh, and work on them a bit here over the next few days okay, as part of your studying. Okay. Questions there? Anything you want me to go over or review more specifically? Don't be afraid to ask. Okay, well, I'll give you some time to work through that sheet then, and if something comes up that you'd like me to talk about a little bit more or show you how to do, then just ask, and we will.